In the fascinating life of Abraham Lincoln, there's a lesser known story that almost led him into a dangerous duel. It all started in 1842, during a time of financial turmoil in Illinois. The state faced a financial crisis, leading to a controversial decision that stirred public anger. The state announced that it would no longer accept its own printed money as a form of currency, insisting that taxes could only be paid with silver and gold. This decision had a significant impact on the people of Illinois, as it rendered the state's paper money virtually worthless. The sudden rejection of the currency left many citizens unable to pay their taxes, causing frustration and resentment to spread throughout the state. Among those deeply affected by this financial upheaval was Abraham Lincoln, a prominent member of the Illinois Whig Party. Lincoln recognized the detrimental consequences of the state's decision and saw it as a threat to the economic well-being of the people he represented. As an advocate for the Whig Party, Lincoln strongly opposed the Democratic financial plan and actively voiced his dissent. He believed that the state's refusal to accept its own money was a misguided policy that unfairly burdened the citizens. To express his discontent and engage in the ongoing public discourse, Lincoln found an opportunity to contribute through the Sangamo Journal, a prominent newspaper at the time. With the permission of his friend Simeon Francis, the editor of the Sangamo Journal, Lincoln penned a series of letters and articles, using his wit and sharp tongue to critique the Democratic Party's financial plan. These letters, often filled with biting satire and humor, struck a chord with the readership. Lincoln's ability to articulate the frustrations of the people and his keen observations about the flaws in the state's financial policies gained attention and support. Writing under the pseudonym Rebecca, Lincoln published an anonymous letter on August 27, 1842. In this letter, he assumed the voice of an Illinois farm wife, narrating a tale of a neighbor unable to pay taxes due to the rejection of state currency. The letter not only criticized the Democratic financial plan but also aimed its satirical arrows directly at James Shields, the state auditor and Democratic Party supporter. Lincoln, through his writings, cleverly portrayed Shields as a fool and a liar, using sharp humor to expose what he perceived as flaws in Shields' character and decision-making. By passionately opposing the state's currency rejection and publishing these satirical letters, Lincoln joined the public outcry against the Democratic Party's financial plan, making his mark as a formidable voice for change. James Shields, having discovered Lincoln's true identity as the author behind scathing newspaper letters, demanded an apology and retraction of the statements. Failing to comply would mean consequences which no one will regret more than myself, in other words, a duel. Lincoln responded later that same day, refusing to retract the statements and stating that Shields assumed too many facts for a response to be worth his time. Lincoln's letter also ended with a veiled threat, the consequence to which I suppose you allude, would be matter of as great regret to me, as it possibly could to you. The exchange of heated letters between the two continued, with both parties standing their ground. Shields, undeterred, formally challenged Lincoln to a duel, setting the stage for a potentially tragic encounter. Lincoln proposed a resolution, he would admit to being the author of the original newspaper letter and issue an apology if Shields would retract his earlier letters and rewrite them in a more polite manner. The stage was set for a dramatic showdown. Lincoln, as the person being challenged, had the privilege of setting the rules. The duel was to be fought with broadswords, and a line was drawn between them, crossing it would mean death. He two adversaries met on Bloody Island, a sandbar in the Mississippi River. Sensing Shields' hesitation, Lincoln, towering in height and showcasing his strength, swung his sword with a mighty blow, felling a high tree branch. The resounding thud and the sight of Lincoln's prowess were enough to give Shields second thoughts. Realizing the gravity of the situation, the two men called a truce, putting an end to the potential duel. This remarkable incident highlighted Lincoln's remarkable ability to navigate tense situations with wit and diplomacy. It also demonstrated his preference for peaceful resolutions, even in the face of personal attacks and threats. And so, the duel that never was became a defining moment in Lincoln's life. It showcased his unwavering principles and remarkable skill in diffusing conflicts, leaving behind a legacy of strength, integrity, and a commitment to peaceful resolutions. Join us next time as we uncover more captivating stories from history. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating insights into the past.